people are surprised to learn that the drugs they take for ailments like headaches or chronic conditions like high cholesterol wind up in the rivers and the lakes in the areas where people live. The simple act of taking a medication might seem on the surface not to have any relationship to the environment, but this is an excellent example how very small activities in our day-to-day -day lives actually do have an environmental impact. in our waters is of concern to scientists because we know these compounds are biologically active. They've been very well studied in human systems, but much less is known how the impact of a drug like a blood pressure regulator might be affecting organisms like fish or frogs that live in these waters. In order to figure out what the impact or the risk that's posed to people and animals are, there are two pieces of information that we need. First of all, we need to understand what concentration or amount that these organisms are being exposed to. And that is the area that I do research on. Finding from work such as mine and that by other scientists is then put together with the second bit of information. And that is understanding how an organism responds to that dose. This is information that's collected by ecotoxicologists and they have been showing that for some of these drugs in the environment, they can be having impacts on fish and other organisms. I always use this slide when I'm giving talks so that people can have a sense of the vision that I bring to understanding what happens to contaminants once they're released into the environment. If we introduce a contaminant in there, there's a number of different processes that can occur. For one, that contaminant can move out of the water and into another phase such as the air, or the solids, or maybe even a fish. And the other process that can occur is that that contaminant can undergo a reaction and become a totally new compound. Those reactions are mediated by microorganisms, by sunlight, or by mineral surfaces. And as an environmental engineer, what I seek to understand is the magnitude of all of these different processes. I ultimately might be able to make predictions of where contaminants go without actually releasing them to the environment. Ten years ago, scientists first had the ability to measure drugs in environmental samples. They've always been out in the environment as long as people have been using these drugs, but this was the first time that we could actually detect them. And it turns out that although we knew these compounds were there, we knew very little about what would happen after they moved downstream away from the treatment plant. If you live in a city, the wastewater that goes down your toilet and the sinks in your house gets collected and treated as central facility. Wastewater treatment plants are designed to remove organic material, so you can think about the fats, the proteins, the carbohydrates that go down your kitchen sink drain. At the treatment plant, bacteria are used to remove this material from the water before it's released to the environment. Here in Connecticut, the high quality of water and all of our trout fisheries are testament to the great job that wastewater treatment plants are doing at removing these organic materials. Unfortunately, the bacteria don't work so well at removing synthesized compounds such as drugs, and so low concentrations of those compounds are released out into the environment. The concentrations of drugs that released from wastewater treatment plants are so low that scientists measure those in units of parts per trillion. So it might not have an impact on humans who are exposed to that water, but ecotoxicologists know that at those very low part per trillion levels, some drugs do have an impact on fish and frogs and other organisms who live in the water constantly. One way that we can tell whether or not the concentrations of drugs are changing and how quickly that they're changing is to actually do a field study where we come out and follow drug concentrations as they move down the river. One reason that the concentrations could be lower is because they're diluted by clean water that's entering into the river, and the other reason that they could be lower is because the, the concentration leaving the wastewater treatment plant changes over time. 
We can correct for both of those effects by releasing a tracer at the wastewater treatment plant and following the concentration of the tracer as it comes down the river. We are using a non-toxic dye called rhodamine as our tracer. Once it's mixed into the water, we can't actually see it, but we can use a very sensitive instrument called a fluorometer to be our eyes. I'm right here at 35 feet. Um, so let me know when the time is ready to grab the sample. Couple more seconds, it's 10.15 now. Now that we know travel times to certain points along the river, we can collect our water samples to measure the drug concentrations on the same time schedule. So what we're essentially doing is following the same packet of water as it's moving down the river. Okay, I'll call them and let them know that it'll be three hours to get to them, I think. We can take those samples, bring them back to the lab, measure the drug concentrations. We'll use that information with how our tracer behaved in the river, and from that we can calculate what the reaction rates are of these drugs in this river. We think that sunlight plays an important role in breaking drugs down once they leave the treatment plant and enter into the river. This river water sample here is yellow from the organic matter that runs off of the soil and the leaves and the watershed into the river. This material plays a very important role when sunlight shines onto the river. It gets activated and it can cause more reactions to happen with the drugs than what occurred just by sunlight alone. It looks like you've processed a lot of water. Are you getting any organic matter? Yep, I'm up to 11 liters now, and look at this nice band here. Oh wow, that is amazing. And look at how brown it is. It's so much darker on the resin than when you look at it in the water. That's just beautiful. Now you may ask, why go to all this trouble? Why not just treat the wastewater better to remove the drugs in the first place? It is true that treatment technologies exist to be able to remove drugs from wastewater, but the cost of implementing those treatment technologies is prohibitive, so we will not be able to upgrade all of our municipal treatment plants. For this reason, scientists such as myself will continue to study all of those little arrows in my cartoon of what happens to contaminants once they're released in the environment. Such studies will allow us to figure out the risk posed by those contaminants and to identify critical processes that lead to the breakdown of compounds. And it will help us to better design compounds that will break down faster once they're released to the environment.